another ASMR coding video and today I'm gonna write a notebook about a decision tree classifier and without further ado let's talk about the data set that I'm going to be using I will link it of course in the description but it's this Kaggle heart failure prediction data set it's a fairly basic data set that is frequently used throughout beginner tutorials, etc. And it's a good classification data set. So I'll download this. And here it is, the hard CSV file. Um, we have age, uh, the sex of the person, chest pain type, uh, it's this weird string here, resting, uh, blood pressure, I assume, uh, cholesterol, fasting blood sugar, etc. Like all of this medical stuff. And then at the end we get whether they have or are likely to get a heart disease or not, whether they are a risk patient basically. So let's get started with a headline. transformations on it. Also, I always import NumPy. I'm not exactly sure if we need it here. I think I also need to do some installs first. So, so pip install pandas into the virtual environment that I created earlier. Also, while we're waiting, um, random fun fact. I finally got a microphone arm, so now my microphone should no longer pick up the vibrations of me slamming the keys on my keyboard. I'm not sure, I think NumPy is already installed, so we can install scikit-learn. And I also need Matplotlib for some visualizations later on. Okay, in the meantime we can continue this import thingy. Um, let's find now already import Matplotlib. Let's read in our data set. Should have opened this. Okay, it's called hard CSV. And then we can print it. Just try the first few lines of it. Okay. Now it has a bit nicer formatting than in the CSV file. We can see, like I said, the age column chest pain type, cholesterol, um, yeah, and then the final column here. So the first thing that we can do is this. And for 
that we will take the whole heart data and drop the heart disease column and for that we need to say access 1 so it drops along this dimension otherwise it will try to drop along this dimension and there's no row that is called heart disease so it's confused and then our Y is a bit simpler, we just select the heart disease column. At this point, I'm gonna be honest, the word heart doesn't look like a word anymore. But now we still have a problem because we have a lot of uh, categorical columns here, like this one, and the classic decision tree from sklearn doesn't like categories, and by doesn't like I mean it just can't deal with them, it throws an arrow when you try to put this in, so we need to get rid of them. Replace all categories ST slope up and ST slope flat are both false and the only remaining possibility is that the patient has a downwards slope. Okay, so what we do for that a new version of the data frame. You could also override it if you want, but that uh, brings a lot of trouble when you try to rerun the 
Excel in the notebook. So pandas had a nice function called get dummies. Oh, let's run this is here because it's a weird naming through pandas get dummies. So we mentioned that in the documentation. And in this get dummies we just pass the x value and then we say drop first equal to true you can leave out one of those columns by setting drop first equals true yeah then we get let's also do now we see we got the numerical and then we get a sex column only for a male because again um, in this the way this data set is designed if they are not male then they're female um, not the most representative data set but that's uh, another topic then we get chain pass chest pain time ata or nap or ta and i don't know what the other uh, value is here but Go all the way to ST, we see we have ST slope flat and up but not down because if they are both zero, which we don't have an example here, but if they were both zero then we know that the remaining value has to be one, so there's really no information lost. Okay, so next up is the classical. Um, that's it for preprocessing. Next, we split the data set into the training and testing part. So, again, that's, I think I need to do an import for that from SK Learn module selection. Import the train. Split. Do, 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 do. Go down. Uh, so, x train, x test, y train, y test. We get by calling train test split on our data x encoded and also pass in. Y, and then we can specify that we want test size to be uh, 30%. Now, next up, we can actually do the filter tree. So, for the tree, we can do from fkthorn to tree. I might, in the end, copy paste this up. I'm not, I'm never sure where to put the imports in a notebook. Doing them while at the top is kind of confusing. I guess it's best practice for like scripts, but in a notebook it's a bit, it's a bit weird because you have to scroll all the way up to find out where this is coming from because there's so much text in between. Anyways, um, import decision tree. Classifier. I'm gonna do a regression one soon, I hope. Please someone annoy me if I don't actually do that. Thank you. Um, so, call it D tree. And it will be a decision tree classifier. And writing it correctly would help. And now you can give it some hyperparameters like max step equals two for visualization, but I guess we'll play around with it later a bit. Let's just try it. Okay, so then you can do fit on x train y. 
Okay, and then you can do predictions by calling D3 predict on the test data set. And now we can test the accuracy. So from SK bone metrics import accuracy score. So now we can get test accuracy accuracy score on Y test and predictions. Let's actually also do So 80%, I guess, acceptable. Um, this also depends a lot on uh, this split because it's random. I think if we do this here again and then run this again, yeah, now we get 83 on both. So there's a lot of variation in here. But yeah, this is more about creating a general tutorial on how to use decision tree and like training, like how we can uh, use all the functions then about creating the best decision tree ever. I don't really have that goal today. Maybe for another day. Oh, also maybe I should mention that my goal in general is to get like a better understanding of all of the tree algorithms, so like XGBoost and all of that advanced gradient boosting, whatever stuff. So this is just the basics and I'll just cover them quickly and then move on to some other stuff. And then here we can do, I don't know, so now we can optimize a few more. Um, I only said max depth equal to 2, but there's a few more that I want to quickly introduce, so... Here. Avoid a 
fitting. completely ridiculous. Please let me know if there's a better way to pass in all of these parameters. I am too lazy to Google right now. And then we fit the tree again, like above. And save our test predictions. visualize 
be helpful for presenting your results to colleagues, managers, and stakeholders as you create a figure. You adapt the figure size possibly. I think I optimized this for as small as, like, this is zoomed in because of the YouTube video. I'm not sure if it will fit. But then you pull plot tree on the decision tree. And you pass in the feature names as the column names. So, hard data just zero and one, it's not particularly expressive. And then you can decide on the level of detail, so let's just say impurity false, proportion true, and filled equal true. And then you can also save the figure This is not dark mode, I have no idea if you can make it in dark mode, but you can see that the most important um, feature for the tree was the ST slope actually, that we discussed earlier. And now this is a bit stupid because it's as small at 0.5, but basically if the slope is not upwards, then we go here, but if it's um, upwards, then we're on this side. So if it's downwards or flat, then we go here. If the person is a uh, male, we go here. And if they have a heart rate of bigger than uh, 143.5, we look at the resting blood pressure. And then uh, in both of these cases, they have heart disease. So you can see the coloring a bit. All of these here have heart disease. And I don't want to go into too much detail of decision tree interpreting, but this is still valuable information because you can see the ratio here. You can see that in this uh, part here, we still had 26% of people who had a heart disease, but the overwhelming majority of people with these uh, characteristics uh, were not at risk for heart disease or did not develop one. Uh, no, wait. 26% had no heart disease, but 73% got a disease. And this gets even more uh, tragic. If the resting blood pressure is bigger than 126.5, and in this case, 82% of the patients had heart disease. 
versus when the resting blood pressure is not as high, um, there's only a 65% chance, so to say, that the patient has heart disease. Of course, this is not a prediction of the probability, so to say, but yeah, only 65% of people in this leaf has heart disease. So you can see here, for example, in this leaf, it's 100% of people. And this is also fairly sure, so if we go downwards to here, then we're in like 80 to 90% surety, versus here, we're only like 60% sure. So it's still important where we end up, even though this whole subtree here is heart disease, versus um, if the ST slope is upwards, then you pretty much already are in the heart disease camp in the no heart disease camp you are pretty much in the clear I don't know why this is red, I always assume this is the bad one <laughs> but it's not so yeah, if your heart uh, the, the, the slope goes up then you're pretty much in the clear except when you have very low cholesterol, I suppose otherwise no heart disease with various amounts of surety going up to 100% of the patients are here and like 90 all around here. So yeah, I'm gonna end the video here. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!